I know from the slashing guitars of that intro to the show, those of you who have your Little Mix t-shirts on and your Girls Aloud CDs ready to go might be a little confused. You might think we're dragging to the back of some CBG style mic club to have our way with you. And we will eventually. But uh, for all of you who have um, streamed our, our guest over 80,000 times on Spotify, we do indeed have the amazing Jamie Adrian with us. Um, but before that, Lindsay, what's up? Tell me what's I, up. Um, I don't know. I'm here. I'm, I'm doing stuff. I'm really excited for a lot of, um, I'm one of those stragglers who have yet to see Nope. And I've uh, finally, it's so funny. I finally like roped in my father-in-law to come see this movie. Nice. Like he's like, oh, this is the Jordan Peele guy. Seems uh, pretty interesting. So guess what, guys? Jordan Peele isn't cool anymore because now white men in Indiana in their 60s want to see their films. So sorry, Jordan. It's over. He's just like the, the just like the whip and the nay nay. He's, he's the devastated. White people have it now. So um, we got to hide. We got to find someone else. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, Poor Jordan. Um, I know it's I mean but I I hear it's really good I'm really excited for what else am I so really you haven't seen for? it no I haven't seen it. I've literally seen that it. okay okay I'm seeing it, it tomorrow okay. uh, and it was really funny I had a friend who uh, was having a having a hard time last week and he was like man I was having such a hard time and and I you know just to make myself feel better and distract myself I went to go see nope and I didn't even like it and I felt really oh, bad no. for him yeah it like sucks when you when you know that you're gonna see a movie that you're gonna like and then you end up actually not liking it i think um i think that made him real sad so but uh maybe fingers... we should all just go into films going i'm gonna hate it i'm gonna right? hate it i'm gonna that's hate what, it that's what i tried to do literally, like it. And yeah then you literally this time i didn't even watch trailers for jordan peele's thing because in us uh the the ending was in the trailer and was it, it really? yeah and it like made me really upset it was like the girl strangling the other girl and so then oh, I was wow. like, yeah. So then that. before the twist happened, I was like, oh no, it's going to be a twist. And <laughs> I knew the twist because of the trailer. So anyway, um, oh, uh, ways to, uh, a reminder that you're uh, listening slash watching DaggerCast. And if you want to talk to us about films, please do so. Um, we have a Gmail. It's DaggerCastInfo at gmail.com. Um, we're on all the things, but YouTube is the best. And um. I don't know. Tell us how you feel. We're on Instagram. So get on it. Nice. So anyway, I'm super pumped and excited to uh, to talk some serious scream queenage with uh, with our guests. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we won't be jaded about it. A little, <laughs> a little, little mix. <laughs> so Jamie, you're, you're on my man, Adrian, Jamie. Jamie, Jame, Jame did. Hi. Oh. What's up? That was a very cute Jay joke. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm just wondering before we start things off, can I say you're so fine, a gold mine? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm quoting you, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I tried to rhyme like a, little, like a little kindergartner. I'm telling you, when, when I know what's up, when I know what's going on, I'll listen. If it's yeah. like, hey, here's my thing, I'll listen to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was, uh, as I was saying before, when we were not, uh, when we were not being recorded is your music is very in the club, sweaty bodies, four on the floor, uh, very good. And I'm, I'm very excited. You said that you're um, part of, a, you're on a label that is like exclusively LGBTQ and it's the first of that kind. Oh uh, yeah. A little bit, tell me more about that. Yeah. So uh, it's a uh, label, Soul Fierce Music. It's based out of Toronto. The guy, the owner, the producer of all my music is Velvet Code, who's done like official Taylor Swift remixes. And didn't he just... do a Lady Gaga for yeah. the awesome, like for yeah. the Chromatica? Yeah, that was yeah. a that was a great lineup of remixes. So okay, keep going. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, at first, like I've, I've been I've been singing since I was eight years old. So that's a very long time ago. And I think I I'd given up, and I was like, over it, and I was like, COVID happened, and I was like, ah, I'm not gonna do anything. So then I had a friend that was a DJ and it was like, come on, just go record demos. And it's a website you can like kind of buy the rights to music and stuff. So I started doing that. And then I saw this ad kept popping up. He had just started it. So I was like, well, it's not going to kill me to like just submit what I have. And I, I can't just like 
submit to like a random I, I like do my back like my back checks and like and I'm like oh my like, I'm gonna find his personal email and see it and then you know just kind of see what he's done so then I emailed him like behind the scenes and then he liked my voice and we did we did the first song together and then I loved it and all people liked it so I was like well I'm just gonna do this and you know try to keep going so and now it's just it's kind of snowballing into something bigger than I thought it was gonna be so I'm, nice. I'm happy. good it's a good thing <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, yep. My one thing though is you are not in the video for what were you drinking? And you, dude, you're adorable. You are adorable. And I'm, I'm just like, I was waiting for you to pop up in the video. And I'm like, where is he? Where is he? Where's so I, your friend? <laughs> I, so uh, with COVID and all that stuff, I haven't had a chance to make the video for it. Okay. And I track which is a video bar so they they kind of have to have something like a visual to show okay so i might just kind of edit those videos with like the thunder down under guys and just play like so they have something to show on the screens but the new one that comes out uh next month in september i am a hundred percent in it awesome yes. well i think i bumped into you on the street after you'd finished filming that yeah i think so. i think yeah i film like almost all of it i think when i saw you yeah, yeah. and then i the like the final piece above men's room the, the alan has a crazy rooftop and we film, we filmed it I, I actually just got the video yesterday nice. so I, I it's 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 awesome i love it it's so good not just because i'm in it but it's <laughs> <laughs> why not it's, is this why for not? the new one that's on spotify the feed my ego that one oh, this is for the the next single called beautiful life yeah. okay very cool so you have so there there's there's more in the chamber Oh yeah, uh, I I have beautiful life. Then I have um, another one called Howl at the Moon. That's really cool. Uh, I just I just rewrote Feed My Ego completely in Spanish. Oh, nice. That's gonna be real. That was hard. That was really hard because it's it's not it, you cannot translate it word for word. So I had to kind of switch the song up a little bit. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I have another one called Belong that I finished, and I just got two new tracks to write to, and then I'll have three more to do. Because I know once an album out, hopefully October. So I have to like speed it up. <laughs> awesome. Howl at the Moon sounds very October esque Halloween. It is. It's very, very, very Halloween y. Well, it's like, well, it's a lot of like the different like uh, natural disasters kind of intertwined in like someone trapped in this uh, like their headspace and they're trying to get out. And Howling at the Moon is like their exit, like to kind of brave what's coming their way. It's, it's a really cool song. Nice. Uh, it. And it's very, very hard to sing. <laughs> well, um, I think you and I are well met, um, from what I understand, in that you just mentioned natural disasters. And I am terrified by real life horror stuff, you know, natural disasters, through crime, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it, it sounds like you kind of have some of the same feelings um, about the horror genre, you, you know, that you don't want you know, you, you like the fantasy stuff, but not like uh, the, the stuff that's going to make it keep you up at night. Yeah, I don't do ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do I can't see it. I, I, I scare myself so easily. It's people at work always just love scaring me. I don't like dark rooms. I don't like hearing noises. I don't like the lights off. I'm, I'm a big, huge baby. So apparently stuff is too, it's too real for me. <laughs> you said something about not liking leprechauns. Um, uh, <laughs> like, I, I had that down here too. Yeah, please explain. I want to know is specifically why the leprechaun. I I just had a bowl of Lucky Charms, so it, it just looking at the box made me think about like, oh, what's so scary about this little guy? <laughs> I, I I mean like I've been watching horror. Like my my dad used to make us watch it every night. Like we would go to bed. I mean he was either like you either watch it with the family or you hear it from your bedroom. So like doesn't matter. You're gonna watch it. And for some reason. The leprechaun has given me night terrors since I've seen it, and I'm 35 years old, and I'm I still have night terrors about him, and he's just this like Warwick Davis. I just, it's so hard to even hear him speak, because I like freak myself out. Like, and I'll say like, oh, I can watch it, and then I'll watch a clip, and then I just won't be able to sleep the whole night. Yeah, and he's, he's just about to start up Willow again, right? Like they just started. They're starting. They're I think they're doing a new Willow movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's, I'm, I thought it was a series, but I think it's, it might be. A oh, movie. it could be a series. Well, yeah, yeah. steer clear. Um, uh. <laughs> it's so funny though. Even the videos of him, like as as like the leprechaun, like smoking weed with like Snoop Dogg, like those videos, 
are hilarious, but I'm sure for you, you're like, oh, hell no. Like, yeah, it's just it's the creepy, like, like even, like, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Okay. Like, coming down the stairs in the first one, just like the little creepy, like, hit, like you're literally getting goosebumps. <laughs> the creepy <laughs> things and like, uh, I can quote all the movies. Don't get me wrong. I've seen them hundreds of times, but when I'm not watching it, like I still scare myself. Can can you explain to me? You said that uh, your dad was the one who like makes you watch horror films. Like made you like, I just yeah. I like jealous. How, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm jealous like, of that. My my, my parents thought I was a freak because I liked horror. So the fact that you had a family encouraged it, I'm like I want your childhood, Jamie. <laughs> like I'm ki- I'm kind of jealous, but I'm also kind of like scared as well for you as a <laughs> child. Um, my my brother once called us. My mom and I were like on a vacation for like a weekend or something. And it was like no kids allowed, so he couldn't come. And yeah. my and his babysitter was a little more, you know, they were a little more lax. They had older children. And Keenan called us like from another room, like in a panic, crying, asking if he could come home. And we were out of town and we were like, what the fuck is going on? Like it's terrified. They were watching The Exorcist. My kid, my brother was five. Oh, I was about- like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I remember being like, okay, your fucking friend slash babysitter mom sucks. Like, because we were like, that sucks. But also I was like, there's got to be families like that. So is that like... Oh, 100%. Was- Interesting. Yeah, they would... It, it, like, I, just, I I mean, we I think both of you can remember that uh, video store smell. So like, I just remember he, we would go down and rent all the new releases. And with my dad, it was... He was this macho Mexican that didn't care about like nudity, so he uh, he didn't care. Like we had to watch it, and because we were boys, we could see everything pretty much. So he didn't have any. There was no limits. So yeah, I remember The Exorcist. I mean, we used to, like I remember running the Leprechaun for the first time. I remember like Night of the Demons, and it took me a while to be able to watch like the Slumber Party Massacres. So those are my favorite, like all, like so, like Sleepaway Camp and all that stuff. But um, my, my mom was kind of iffy about those because they have the girls right on the covers. So, but uh, yeah, he just whatever. I, like he just didn't care. That was like our family thing was just watching horror movies every every night. So we went through like every row and just watched all of them. That's amazing. I get just interesting to hear other perspectives because yeah, my mom was pretty like, you know, she 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 was fine with me watching stuff like that. But yeah. then, like, you know, when you actually got scared, she was the one who had to, like, deal with us, like, when we... <laughs> exactly. You... Yeah. So then it was kind of like, well, maybe not. Maybe let's not. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's really... That's interesting. And so, obviously, because your dad was so ab- about you just being like, hey, naked chicks, whatever, it turns out uh, you, love scream, you love scream queens. Oh, yeah, for sure. I definitely want to be a scream queen. <laughs> I want to, like, explain like wanting to be a scream queen like what like I guess what what does that what does that mean to you I mean I when I was little like to me the scream queens from back then were just always the pretty girls that kind of either died first or made it toward, like to the end like Return of the Living Dead like Linda Quigley was the girl that no one ever like the hot like punk chick who wanted to dance naked you know a cute 20 years later I was a stripper <laughs> and then like you know, then there was, like, the girl that played Tina. She was, like, the pretty girl next door. Like, I think that's my first memory of, like, re- re- rewinding a scene is where she falls through the stairs and Tarman tries to kill her. And I just, like, I just always had, like, a fascination with, like, these really pretty girls and, like, to see how far they made it or to see how their death scenes were cool and creative. So I just always had a thing for pretty girls in movies. <laughs> That's like, and it's also kind of interesting because you're right. Like the girls in horror movies are always the more fun. Yeah. Like always the fun ones, always the ones that are partying for the most part. Like, you know, especially Linnea Quigley. I I was at, I was at a hardcore show uh, the other, uh, the other day. Yeah. It was like, it was just like, you know, just hardcore grind bands, just blasting, blasting, but they were playing videos. Like they're playing VHS videos and they played the Linnea Quigley like workout tape, and oh, it was it was amazing. Like I, I I had no idea that it even existed, but she just like I what I love about her is she eats up the screen like every single inch of her. She is like look at it, look at it like all the time, and she also was never like it was never just a surface thing. 
Like that girl got down with the makeup. Like like if the horror people, she got down with whatever like technical blood stuff they wanted to do. If they yeah. wanted to just change her entire face, like she was like, let's go. So uh, I uh, I really I really respect her. I was lucky enough to film a short with her and to watch her prep for certain things was really, really cool. We went into the basement of the Davis Theater, which was epic because there's all these crazy tunnels and film storage and, and weird noises in dark places, Mr. Jamie. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's just like, like to get like, there was just certain emotions that she had to take a moment and go, hey, let me just do this. and. You know, I, I I would watch her work on stuff. It was really cool. It was cool. She's epic. She's epic. So little. She's tiny. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think that's a pre prerequisite. One of my good friends, uh, Debbie Dutch, um, did a bunch of projects with Linnea. Uh, she's in her skin book. Linnea did a mock up of the Madonna sex book called Skin, and and Deb. Uh, is in that with, with Linnea and uh, but they're, they're kind of the same thing Deb is so tiny uh, we were hanging out this weekend and she, and she was always you know touching me and, and wrapping her arms around me and literally she's like this high it's like this little kid coming up with her little armor on my and it was awkward because like I'm six foot and she's god whatever 411 and she's always she's you know holding my hand and putting her arm around my shoulder and I'm kind of like stooping you know down to, uh, so yeah, so I, I think that's a prerequisite for for um, women in horror from the eighties and nineties. You had to be pretty and tiny. Oh. You got to be itty bitty for itty the bitty. for the for the costumes for so you don't have to use as much liquid latex right. or whatever. <laughs> um, Fabric won't cost as much, you know, you know, not as much, you know, skin to to cover, you know, yeah, yeah. Camera only has to grab this much. Yeah, right. you know. So you're it. saving on that cin cinematography, you know, probably, you know, the donuts, you know, you don't have to leave as much out, you know, for uh, <laughs> crew meals. I mean, there's so many benefits to having uh, See, miniature now, victims. Now I want to find a soundbite of Linnea Quigley somewhere being like, dude, I went down on them donuts. <laughs> you can't keep a donut around me. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Especially if they're tiny, you can use them for earrings, necklaces. Right. <laughs> definitely definitely oh, man. um do you have a favorite uh uh linnea film or, or or a favorite film with um the babes of horror mr Jenner? Uh, i mean it's, i think it's always going to be a tie between return of living dead and night of the demons like because yeah. i just her character like suzanne and trash just just visually amazing like yeah. I love the way she screams and just like, I, I just love everything about her. I think she's, I love, those are my two, probably my two favorite of hers. Awesome. Awesome. How would you compare that? I know, I know another one of your favorites is Nightmare on Elm Street 4. So is, is there a winner in, in the trash heap of those three? You know, you know it's, if, it's, if they had to duke it out, who would come out the less bloody? I feel like it's changed now that I'm like, like I'm friends with like Brooke and Toy and stuff like that. And just meeting them and like i see the movie differently from just because i i you know that flashback for the past yeah, couple yeah of years. yeah so, um, so brooke and toy are uh debbie and sheila in the film folks just just in case you are uninitiated or Thank you. blind or you, you know whatever if, if you're not a cool kid like it's, like our super guest here and, and, and it's and, been a minute for me yeah, so. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so so they were sheila and debbie in the film. sorry debbie cockroach sheila gets her life sucked out with, of her with the, the infamous kiss scene uh but yeah like uh i don't know i just, just i did, like that mtv era is just so much so much fun like it's just i'm a sucker for like creative like death scenes and i think that's why a lot of the like current horrors that doesn't it's not really my thing it, it i still watch it but i, I just always watch these old movies because they're i think they're just like getting cock the roach motel and just like just you know, i don't know i just it's hard i can't pick <laughs> So yeah, so are you saying like kind of the stuff now is is not as exciting because it's, I I guess you're right. Like a lot of a lot of the horror that we're seeing now is a little bit more like heady, is a little bit more like, um, yeah, kind of based in reality. But like yeah, the kills aren't aren't very intricate. Like can you like yeah, I guess give me like a give me your favorite intricate like death scene. Hmm. I mean, uh, I just like a recent one or like something or, 
just something that you're i know you said you like watch a lot of foreign stuff like i think sometimes they can be a little like some asian horror movies are very intricate with their death scenes but yeah I just mean, whatever whatever jumps out at you i guess i think one of the probably one of the like most like grotesque like i was my jaw dropped and i watched the whole movie was dead snow 2 mm. like, watching that like and i think it's it's what like maybe like 10 12 years old i think can't, I don't think it's that old, like that old, but just watching that and like I did not expect any of like the scenes to happen like when they take over that, that town and there's people like taking a bath or just like on the toilet or just like eating breakfast and they're just going in there just killing everybody and, like that just stuff like that where I'm like I didn't expect it whatsoever and I feel like a lot of movies you're like there's no way this can happen and then it happens you're like oh I, I kind of called that already but uh Ready or Not was really good I really like that and uh the Belko experiment I can watch that every day oh yeah i just i like i like i like rooting for different characters you know like i feel like i'm not a big friend of the 13th fan but like there's always so much so we're we're, we're just stopping this interview right now i I can't deal i cannot deal (laughs) dude well it's funny though because people have been talking about friday or you know you said did you say friday the 13th he's not a big friday the 13th fan which which i think I, i think is 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 um they say it, it. That's the cash grab. You, you know, like like Halloween's got the art of John Carpenter behind it, um, and, and and just kind of that spooky epicness of Michael Myers. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think you definitely have like you're exploring issues of child abuse and 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 just uns- and growing up, like how weird your body feels just growing up and and dealing with stuff. So I think Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely the more intellectual, like fan loving kind of property and. And Friday the Thirteenth was just pretty much they, they did it for cash. You, you, you yeah. Know, it, well, which, in- which and I love that series because I, I grew up in that. You know, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three played all summer long, the summer between my freshman and sophomore year of, of high school, and I always loved horror. But I think that really sucked me in fully into the love of horror, and I loved Dana Kimmel, who was the lead, uh, Chris, and that I loved her character so much, and she represented so much about survival and getting through to me so that's why friday the 13th is my series because i found a real strong emotional connection to it but it's not i mean they weren't made for that yeah. purpose and i think halloween and nightmare on Elm street definitely have a little more art and, well and, um, i agree because it is very like uh friday the 13th is very like get from point a to point b it's like here are campers Jason is not like a creative guy. He's just like walk, 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 step, steps. You know, he's like walk, 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 kill you. Like it's not necessarily like he has like a a personality or plays with his. You know, he doesn't like play with his prey. He just kind of comes to you and he murders you. Uh, I think and um yeah like oh and and it's funny because Nightmare on Elm Street's been having a really hard time like getting a reboot or like finding its way back to the current and I've always been really curious about why that is because we've you know because we I don't know whether it's like do we not like the impish constantly punny uh evil guy who's like always cracking these like silly ass jokes is it because our life is a nightmare (laughs) because My my theory is simple. I think it's because Robert England's getting too old, and Robert England is that character. Like they tried to reboot it once with, with an actor who's amazing. I, I mean, the, the guy who played Freddy in the, the remake um, is is an amazing actor. Amazing actor, Jackie Early Haley. He's done tons of stuff. But I love I, Jackie I, Earl Haley. Yeah, he's a, and I, I think he's I think he's a fine Freddy, but he's not Robert England, and, and I think that role is so identified with him that it's almost impossible like that's my thought I don't, I don't know what you think jamie but um. uh yeah i mean like i i honestly i hate the re- the reboot i can't I, I'll, every like 10 years i'll put it in and be like let me see if i and then like t- 10 minutes in once they kill like kellen lutz and katie cassidy i'm like mm, i can't do it i think it was horribly cast the great actors it's a great cast i was so excited but i just did i just i'm so obsessed with robert england that like it and then the fact that he made him a child molester instead of a child murderer kind of threw me off too because the whole point was like he killed all these kids and the you know the parents and here it's like oh like took him in a hole in the basement that's kind of it just like i was so obsessed with the original like concept that it just i just, I just what like, i thought would have been an interesting concept and, and and someone who's a rabid nightmare on elm street fan like 
jumped on my throat set and told me that she would have even hated the film more. I thought would have been very interesting for that remake is if they had made Freddy a victim. If they, if the kids had lied, like, like and I'm speaking as someone who's been sexually abused, you know, grew up in the Catholic church, but I thought it would be an interesting concept if the kids had lied about him abusing them and he got murdered and that that's why he was coming back. He, he was this innocent guy and the kids just thought he was creepy and they lied about him touching them and that's why he came back for revenge. I thought that would have been kind of changed everything on its head a bit and would have been like kind of a topical interesting thing but I've, I've had people who love the series who have told me that they would have hated the movie even more if that was the case but I'd, I'd be so into that yeah I, I think that would have been differentiated early Haley's version of that a lot from England you know so it just made him sympathetic not like the monster yeah. Also, a, a, a nice shout out to the most recent Stranger Things. Uh, suddenly, a character, you know, that was like just supposed to be some old man in a prison was Robert England. Uh, yeah. yeah, they they literally cast him, and 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 he did he did his he did his thing. He did it just yeah, as good as he needed to. And uh, I thought it was a really good like like I don't know the strange the Duffer Brothers like to do a, quite a lot of uh, homaging, and this was a very good like good you recognize <laughs> where you're coming from and bring those people in and get them some money instead of these young kids that just are so smartly dressed <laughs> well good for robert england now he can charge 150 dollars an autograph instead of 100 <laughs> no, I, i'm he's brilliant like he's a brilliant actor uh, i've been lucky enough like i i think you met him as well adrian um uh but that he sat down with me i, I was a, a theater critic here in Chicago at the time, and and he acted out for me how he would have done uh, Tom in the Glass Menagerie. Like he had been up for the part, and he kind of told me like he was would play him very you know effeminate with a southern accent and really really play up the homosexuality of it, you know, because obviously Tennessee Williams was great. So it was this amazing encounter. Like he kind of acted out you know his version of Tom for me uh, from the Glass Menagerie. So he's super 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 cool. But the cons are getting super ass expensive like the prices for autographs and photos are ridiculous and anytime you get a boost like that i, I think it allows them to even charge more so um craziness uh, i mean I, I haven't been to one since before covid but like um i think i went to flashback i think with, with was it with you i think we didn't go together but we met up there yeah and then uh let's like um i went to i think uh what's wizard world i think i went to and then I, I, okay, I actually cried when I went to Wizard World because I met Charisma Carpenter from Buffy. I, I love that you love all these women because I, I, I do too. I, I, I mean, the divas of horror are, are my favorite. So that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. This is so lovely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. You really are like, like to me, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it, I'm really, it, so, so how uh, did she, what was the reason for that and how did she react? So I, Buffy was that show for me that like, I feel like I just grew up watching like it was like the love like the first time I ever talked back to my to my parents was because she told me I couldn't watch Buffy like that's how weird I was like it was just my favorite show I love Sarah Mich if I ever met Sarah Michelle Gellar I would drop to my knees and like die like I mean and then I just wrote a new song actually and I named dropped SMG in there and did like a little Buffy kind of boost that only Buffy fanatics would understand but it goes with the song so if you don't know what it means it still makes sense but she's so fine a gold mine. <laughs> even the best of us have to go to sleep <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. so, continue i'm sorry with, with charisma so oh yeah so yeah charisma uh so okay. i thought she was there and james marsters was there too but the only day i can go he wasn't there so i cordelia has been one of my favorite characters and uh i just want i wanted to meet her so bad so i got in line and I, they, they come, it was all in my head, it was more dramatic than it was. She came out this black curtain and she gets sat down and she's so pretty. And she's, I think she's in her mid forties, late forties now, but she looks like she did on the show. It's like the 17 year old girl. So she came out and I was like, like 10 people behind where the first few were assigning their books or whatever. And I just, I, she finally, she's like, Hey, how are you? And I just started cry. I just let it out. I started crying. And it's like this 30 year old man is like crying. And she's like, oh my God, please don't cry. She's like, I'm just a regular person. I promise, like, I don't know what I like, don't. So then she like called me down, grabbed my hand. And like, she's like, let's take a picture. Like, you don't like, I, like just relax. So we took one and she's like, I don't like it. She's like, don't tell anybody what's. So she took like five or six. 
and she wanted like an Instagram thing, an Instagram filter. But then I just like she just gave me a hug and told me that, like that just like that she appreciates like me being such a fan and that she's laughing that I cried. <laughs> she's crying, I'm just like I'm just this girl. Like I'm nobody special. So that was really that was really nice. Awesome. Well, That's I'm a- sure she's gotten that before, and I'm oh. sure she'll get that again. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, or maybe she doesn't, and she was like, somebody cried today. Like, <laughs> and then she'll just be thinking about it. Like, that's, and also, of course, it, of course, Cordelia, because she is the hot one. Um, She was always, she was always like the, you know, like the, the hotter one and the one with more, like, attitude, you know? So I, I, I like your flavor of Scream Queen. What you also mentioned, um, liking Scream 4. And you immediately shot off the character. Well, I forget what character. Oh, but the Kirby. One that, yeah, so Kirby, Hayden. who literally is the one. Yeah, Hayden Penitentiary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that was the part of the movie where I felt seen too, because she was like <laughs> knocking out all these movies. Like, what do you want to hear? Blah, 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 blah. And she's just going, and she says oh. deep, and she said deep red, and I was like, Ugh. like I like threw up because the mainstream horror never really talks about like the Dario Argentos, you know, like they all, they, it's, it's almost like, it's like, we're American horror. We don't care about like the foreign stuff. But when she started shooting off the foreign stuff, I was like, ah, I don't want her to die. And, and, and then she, she like, in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, that's where I, I, I sometimes, like I, I'll generally remember actresses and who's in what, and I sometimes forget plot points, and that's why I was so confused. I thought she had died in Scream Four, but she didn't. Okay. They, they uh, they. I know. I, I have a lot of spare time when I wake up in the morning, like at five in the morning, because I have two dogs, and they always like treats at that time. So I get on YouTube, and there's like, if you they they close up on certain parts of Scream Five, and there's like a YouTube clip that says like interview with uh, Survivor from. Woodsboro Massacre, Kirby, and there's like, so well, she's alive for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been a minute since I, I, I think I saw it in the theater, read it, yeah. read it on Blu-ray, maybe watched it when I got the Blu-ray, but, but it's been a while. So I was- so good. Of course, so good. But yeah. I'm, yeah a I'm, a, I'm a soap opera fan and no one really dies on soap operas or in horror films, I guess. So, so I'm not, I mean, there's always a way to bring it back. So. I feel know. like Scream 4 is the one that was the most memed, like, not all the other ones got mean, but there was that surprise bitch. Like that, oh, that is oh. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think, cause, yeah, well, she used that for, uh, was it uh, American Horror Story? Did she? Uh, Roberts, like, yeah. Because I died. know that character does that a lot. Yeah, Emma Roberts is amazing. I amazing. love to be her without like feeling guilty for being such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You just want Eric Roberts to be a father. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> is is Eric Roberts her dad? Yep. That, oh yeah. shit. Yeah. I, I didn't used even... to, not so much now because he's he's such a I mean he's an amazing actor, character actor, but he was gorgeous when I was growing up. Oh, holy fuck. Like <laughs> he was like Eric Roberts was it. Was it. And I think maybe he had a car accident or um, he seems to have a little bit of a limp. I, I met him a handful of years ago, but but uh, yeah, I mean, he's still an attractive dude, but he was like phenomenally beautiful growing up. Yeah, you know, when I was growing up, and, you know, King of the Gypsies, and you know, he kind of reminds me of Killian Murphy a little bit. Oh yeah, Ooh. totally, dude. Yeah, totally. That they both had that kind of spookiness in the eyes and just intensity and kind uh, of creepiness. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's so I, uh, I well, you know, I want to marry a British guy, so. You want to marry a, Brit- a British guy? British, Irish, yeah, I'll go. All right, all right. Okay, I, I got uh, your flavor now. That, I, that makes... I will keep an eye out. You're involved <laughs> though, right? Correct. Was it? You, you, you're 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 involved with the uh, Chicago theater actor though, correct? Uh, oh, um, uh, I've been single for like three, four years. Oh, uh, see, see how little we we we've. It, it's my own, my own fault. We, we we've kept in touch. Like, like I, I I know you were. All right, all right. Well, well, there we go. See, that was my subtle way of letting the world know that uh, you're okay. single. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie. I got Jamie. So now, I got a hot... now, now, the you know tens and tens and tens of people who watch this will know. Jamie, I got a, I got a hot tip. If What's you up? just get if if you don't have if you don't use the Peloton app, um, because you don't need to have the bike to do it. I do though. Um, I mean, I don't have the bike. I just use the app. But there's a there's a little there's a little Irish guy, 
who does the strength training now, and he he pretty tasty. Okay. He All right. he, he little, he tasty, but, but he loves. I, I, doesn't he? Isn't that the, is that the guy with the tattoo of the leprechauns? On oh, the <laughs> Wouldn't that be just like a? Oh yeah, I'm Irish. Look at my leprechauns, and they're just like. Yeah, that's right. like okay, to be fair, maybe it'll... maybe you can ignore that if the pot of gold is big enough. If his pot of gold oh. is big enough, maybe you can ignore the leprechauns. Oh, so what's really funny, like as much as I, it's, I'm, I'm such a weirdo. As much as I, he scares the shit out of me, and I hate him. I actually. Um, have a line the Spanish song for Feed My Ego that it's about like uh, something about can't believe just like a leprechaun with this pot of gold and then I wrote it I was like I'm like oh my god I'm like why am I doing this to myself but it just went so <laughs> long that I was like mm, oh it's in there <laughs> so I, I, as, I, I this corner, corner I, I do, don't know why I do that honestly as a songwriter I fully understand sometimes you just write it and you're like why the fuck am I writing that try some other phrases and then you're like nope nope that's the one that's got to stick yeah that's hilarious but, uh, so really quick you mentioned like uh the foreign films i love like demons and demons too like i was just mm -hmm. watching i exactly I, I had no life i had no life as a kid i was like i had friends but all i did was watch movies with my brother and so i quote like all the demon movies and stuff like that and like Dead Alive was such like your mother ate my dog. Like I just love like that. I, oh, I love foreign films. They're just they're so good. High and tension. Both Demons and Demons Two have amazing soundtracks, so it's not surprising that you know, you know amazing soundtracks with, with your musical bent that you would um, be drawn to those films because the soundtracks are insane. Like just eighties pop and dance and new wave and God. It, it was, also, it was so High Tension was. Yeah, high like what I, high tension was very, uh, for me it was just very kind of. I guess I just didn't get super scared. What scared you about high tension? I think, well, anytime they involve a dog, I get very upset. Okay, <laughs> sure. Head through the door was a little, but it, I just that was one of those movies where I didn't I had no idea. But then after when it ends, you're like, oh shit! How did I not know this was the ending of that movie? But it was just it was so creepily filmed, and just the like the music in the background, and just, it, it was just it was just such high intensity that I just it was just scary, like because you had no idea what was going on, and this, you know, like it was just it was I don't know, it was just I think it was just filmed perfectly. I guess maybe that's just what it was, but I love that that movie that and like the descent. I know that's not like foreign but i mean the actresses are foreign i guess but that's another one that scared the shit out of me that was so good it's yeah british. i just it's oh. british what is it it's british right the descent uh, or uh, like it's it's filmed in the u.s right it's like in the mountains or something uh, like the appalachians or something i think no i don't know because neil marshall's definitely like an irish or a british director yeah because i think i think there was like one american girl in it okay. and then the other Irish, yeah, but that was yeah, that was a that was a really good one too. I, I just, yeah. I just saw a new trailer for a, a film that is kind of like it kind of reminded me of The Descent in the sense that it was like, hey, natural thing that exists in the world. Turns out it's scary. Um, they're doing this like you know how there there's all these stupid videos of people like climbing very high things, and like. Oh, I think I've seen that preview. Yeah, it's called Fall, where it's literally like these two girls like climb up a, a giant tower. Yeah, I don't oh. do high. <laughs> and it's literally like that's all it is. It's just literally like them being like, "Oh, we're up here, oh no!" And then just things falling. Yeah. And I was like, "That is that is a," because so many of those like little videos I see on on Facebook on my feed, you know, half the time I you know I take like five seconds and I'm like, "Nope." So yeah. yeah. That seems like a that seems like a a no for all of us. Uh, something that is you know too true. Too can it can be uh, too true. I mean that's that's why I'm kind of nervous about the new arachnophobia because I know that's remakes coming and I live in a garden unit so I see more spiders than I should and I feel like I mean the no, are they one, actually there or are you just seeing them? No, they're there. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, right, I, right, I just... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, but also I mean. Do you guys watch The Walking Dead? Because it's the last season, the last part, it's part three of the final season. I I haven't stopped. I've been a fan. You know me and zombies, love them. So I can't I wait. Sad, I sadly stopped, and I 
I keep thinking about bringing it back up just for Norman Reedus alone, who's my personal cup of tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love him, and I'm like, is he is he still alive? <laughs> Wait, not that it's a spoiler; it's out everywhere. But he's he's getting the spinoff in France, so oh. somehow, yeah. So okay. I. I, I, I think you just ruined it for everyone who's listening to this, Jamie. I, I don't know what. No, no, and I was at Comic Con. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding you. I'm don't kidding. make me feel bad. You know, I hate ruining stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hate being mean. <laughs> gossip. It's that bar culture you are a part of. Just, just I'm, a- I'm the weirdest person at my bar. I'm the weirdest. Like, no one, everyone thinks I'm so weird. Because my tastes go from like hot little mix to like crazy deaths. Every more, if, you, if you have Snapchat, add me. Because I always send my friends like just the craziest death scenes ever at like 5.55 in the morning. So when they wake up to do whatever, they're getting people getting their heads ripped off or like yeah. Final Destination stuff. And they're just like, you're fucking weird. And I was like, <laughs> and then like, when they scare me at work, they're like, how do you get scared so fast? Like you sit, watch people yeah, get yeah. eaten alive, but like someone that locks you in the cooler and turns the lights off scares you. It's like, yeah, I think that's scary anybody. Well, yeah, I, I think being locked in the cooler with the lights turned off might be a little, might be a little nerve wracking. I, I don't think I would like that too much. Have you been to the Vic Theater here in Chicago? Uh, is that the one on oh, Belmont? On Broadway and Belmont? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Belmont. yeah. I saw um, fifth- <laughs> excuse me, I, I, I didn't get that. I saw Fifth, I saw fifth Harmony there. <laughs> there you go. There, there. But that is, um, we've done some events there uh, w- through the massacre, Terror in the Isles, and uh, that has a famous ghost story. Oh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> that, you don't want to hear it about, about about the owner's daughter who climbed up into the rafters and hung herself, and the noose is still there. Shut so, up. Swear to God, the staff let us up this windy, windy <laughs> staircase backstage. And literally, you start to get dizzy and hyperventilate because you go up so high. And you can still, it, it looks like a wig because all the smoke from the shows and everything has disintegrated. I've, I've got photos of it on my phone. It was I'm probably fine. one of the coolest, coolest experiences <laughs> of my life. It was really pretty. Like, I, like, like, I don't think I would like to hear her banging around, but, they, but they, they've heard sounds and noises there and, and you know, lights will flick on and off. They, they've had little stories. Nothing horrifying or nothing, you know, like, bad but but definitely like someone's fucking with it so so uh yeah it's got the goosebumps, got yeah, the goosebumps. <laughs> that is but that is i had no idea i have yeah, friends that no, work no, at the vic oh man it's an epic it's like it's an epic story it's like yeah a failed love affair or something like that my thing is, i i wonder if that's actually the news but but i guess she tied the news so tightly that when the fire department went up there they had to cut it at such an angle that the knot was still there and they could never get the knot undone. Because of course the dad who owns the building doesn't want like the, the rope, you know, <laughs> that, that signaled his daughter's demise there, but they could never get it down because she had tied it, you know, so tightly apparently. So that is boo. Oh, that's that's cre- the legend. That's creepy. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love that story. I love that story. So <laughs> Yeah, if, no, you need, if you need to text me at five in the morning, Jamie, to scream at me for telling you that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me on your chat group for uh for all these these oh, murder I scenes. I just want that's what yeah. I would like to wake up to. I would be like, hello. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> have you seen Feast 2? Yes. Yes. No. Oh. Is insane. Yeah. Well, um, I always like that because um, I'm just amazed at how large the penis of um, the mm. person is. Of the, the little person? Yeah. When he, he they're, they're naked, banging. They're, they're, I guess they're these wrestling guys. Oh, and they're they hot. See. They're hot. They're, they're, mm. And the, yeah. the monsters come in to attack their trailer camp and they run out of the, um, yeah. the, 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 the camp the person- with, with this dick just literally yeah am i right am oh I yeah right? it's as long yeah. as it's, yeah 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 oh yeah. I, I see the okay i'm looking at the imdb right now and i see the guy you're talking about yes yes he's hot that they're hot you know not that they shouldn't be not but you know but um i have a friend who on when, when she was still going downtown on l trains had always heard that you know 
the equipment doesn't always match the height of the person. So she would find herself staring at um, the crotches of um, the, the uh, I don't know. What, what, what's, is little person politically correct? I don't, I don't know what's correct. I, I think I, it's little people now. Little people, yeah. So, so of the little people on the train, just, just seeing if she could see the bulge because she had heard that um, they, they, they were, you know. I stare no matter how tall you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. See, I will gonna... have to tell her that she's not alone. That, 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 that was not a weird thing to do, you know. When I was commute, when I was commuting on a train, like in general, like I was always looking at what you were reading, yeah. what you had in your pants, what you were wearing, um, all the time. And but only if I had shades on. If you have shades on, you can look. You can just look all over. But if you don't, sometimes like I'd forget I'd have shades on, and I'd just be like looking at someone and be like, "Oh no, oops, back to my book." Sorry. <laughs> okay, feast two, sloppy seconds. I'm putting that on my list. It looks. I mean, crazy. The, the biker lesbian gang is amazing in it, and like okay. I said, remember the baby. The baby has seen the grandma. Is that is the grandma in the second one? Yeah, right. Dude, yeah. I, all it's, I can remember is that dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I literally I would rewind and rewind and like whenever I feel like watching it, I'll just watch the first ten minutes and then I'm like, okay. Yeah, like, I just I love some of these movies. I'm like, how do they get away with this? Like, it's, some of it's like, yeah, it's so it's so good. Yeah, well, well, that's that's a John uh, Gulliger. Am I saying that right? A uh, clue. Uh, he's Clue's son. Clue, Clue, Clue Gallagher. Oh, he just passed away, right? Like, yeah, Clue away. just died. Yeah. Uh, so that is that that that's um. I thought that would be an appropriate, you know, kind of uh, thing because because John, those are John, those are those are his son's films. Clues in those films. So yeah. Yeah, you were right. It is John Gulliger. The Gulliger, Gallagher, Gulliger. I always say Gallagher, but I don't think Gulliger. that's right. I, I'm really bad with um, pronounce, pronunciation. I can Hello. make pronouncements, but ask me to pronounce something. And you know what was Gulliger. really fucked? Uh, remember, I think it was when I saw you at the Golden Girls convention, and yes. I was hung out with Amelia Kincaid the entire weekend. Yes, 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 your new buddy. Who, who, <laughs> is, who is Angela and the Night of the Demons for those... Yeah. For the tens and tens who don't know. Um, yeah. it's, oh, so nice. She cracks me up. And her yeah. mom's, oh, I just, I love it. Nice, nice. Um, uh, I, I, I saw you at that convention and um, wasn't, because it had been a, a, a little bit and I wasn't quite sure. And, and I still mask up at, at the bigger events. So um, I was talking with my friend, Jeff Lassiter, who is an artist and does a lot of Friday the 13th stuff. Golden Girl stuff. I think you might have met him there. Like, like really bright colors, cartoony, awesome. And I, and I was chatting with him. And I was, I was like, I, I was like, I think that's my buddy Adrian. I'm not sure. And I was like, I just don't want to go up and 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 be weird or or whatever, you know, and and whatever. And so finally, like, I, I went over to you and we're like, yeah, hell yeah, hug, hug, hug. So so I came back to to, to Jeff and uh, I was like, that yeah, that 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 was Adrian. And he goes, good. He goes. Now, now, now you can introduce us. I can just number. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I will try to make that happen. I will try oh, to make that happen. Had my for years. What's that? You've had my number for years. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give it away to people, to <laughs> random folks. <laughs> <laughs> I can start though. You, you know, I've got a little track, you know, and I can just like go, hey, would you like Adrian's number? Like, like on the train, you, you know, like, like I, I could start doing that if you wanted me to. I mean, I do have conversations with numbers that I haven't saved in my phone, so <laughs> they probably would get to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I, I, I can talk forever. What else do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> right, I, I kind of want to talk about, um, I mean, cause you, you talk about how much you love like Scream Queens we, we like a lot of this podcast talks about kind of like representation in horror and mm. how like you know there was a certain time where women were seen in horror just kind of as their physical selves and really as nothing more do you think that things are getting better do you think that was that something ever on your radar like I don't know just um Kind of the way that the treatment of women in horror films. This is not like I'm. I'm not. There's no wrong or right answer here. Um, I am just kind of 
having us reach kind of in this area a little bit? Um, I feel like, I mean, I feel like as I got older, the women became like the star heroes, like would scream and then like, I know what you did last summer and, you know, like the late 90s, or early 2000s, where you, you almost kind of expected the women, the, the women to survive the movie. So I feel like it's very rare to see like a guy kind of win anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's something I never really paid paid attention to. Like I said, I, I love movies with big cast because I like to not know who's going to survive or like, um, just like, I don't know why I thought about this, but like Dale and Tucker versus Evil. It was such a random cast where you like wanted the dumb girls to win or the, the and they would just get killed off like in the chip, the lawnmower chip thing or like, you know, just like, so I, I don't know, I just, I haven't really paid attention about like the, the like gender. That thing. kind of, that's interesting though, because it is very like, it's almost like you're not even seeing it as like, like, oh, women are treated, being treated badly in this. It's, oh, it's like kind of a, almost kind of assumed everyone's going to be treated badly in a horror film because they're all going to die. Like, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, I, I think so many of us critics like really analyze and kind of get. I know I do social political. What does this mean? What does this say? Oh yeah, you, you know. But but it, it's nice to just enjoy the fuck out of it, you know, and and not you know not even worry about that shit, you know. Just enjoy it for the fact that it's it's a it's a thrill ride. It's fun. Yeah. Um, my take on it was I I I did recognize the. Um, exploitation and stuff like that but you know particularly in those kind of usa up all night films a lot of the films linnea did you know that, that there's definitely you know um there's one called vice academy and um uh and, and she's naked uh so much of the time and, and she's doing sex scenes with guys and the, the director literally has her bouncing up and down her breasts flying over on a male's body and you can tell he's got all of his clothes on so I don't, I don't know if the joke is well obviously that they couldn't be having sex because he's fully clothed but she is just writhing on top of him totally committing to her job but it, it's so to me and explo exploitative of her and her willingness to go there because the guy is just totally you can tell he's got everything on um so but I also think the film's offer you know that the, they're police officers and scientists and nuclear physicists and they play all these you know warriors and you know badass chicks and 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 run around with chainsaws and so, so so i think the feministic aspects of these films are also really overwhelming you, you know that that they get to play you know they're the ones who survive to the end you know generally so i, I think it's a really cool balance and dichotomy between that exploitation and the cool kick-ass really powerful things that I get to do in these movies yeah hey yeah, for me it's it's more of like I like to see I mean obviously we all love horror films from back in the day when mm. you know times were a little different um and yet you know and I feel like the stuff I'm seeing now and the way that things are being addressed now at least make me feel like okay hopeful um, but there are still like places where women can just like fucking be women. Like I, I don't know, like I really loved Spring Breakers. I thought that was such a great fucking like, cr like, like just movie of women just deciding to be like, we're going to go to spring break and we're going to be in our bikinis the whole time. And, and I don't give a shit. Like, and a lot of, you know, there was a lot of sex and stuff, but there was also like moments where the girls would just be writhing on the floor and being like, you see this, you can't have it. And it was just very like powerful and strong. Um, I'm kind of like that in my apartment, but no one's here. So um, right. like, <laughs> see this, you can't have it. No one gives a fuck. I'm all alone, but I pretend, I pretend. Well, I try to do it like with my husband. Really wants it, but can't have it. I yeah, just... I try, try to do it with my husband. I'm like, hey, you see all this, you can't have it. And he's like, it smells. And I don't want to have it. Take a damn shower. Take a shower right now. And I'm like, you're right. Oh, good Lord, you're right. Like, <laughs> I haven't left the house in three days. Uh -huh. Good Lord. <laughs> it was All right, so well, oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
the I was he, he's just got that image of me doing that in my apartment floor now and, and he's like okay I'm done I'm, I'm horrified I'm through with the show what the fuck oh. have I gotten myself into <laughs> I, I think we both expect like a snap picture of this interpretive dance you do next okay. time we do all right all right you, you, you got right. it you got it you got it yeah send it to both our inboxes please yeah. um Maybe also, I'll send like, it to my J buddy Jeff instead, you, you know, and, and, and I can't get you Adrian's number, but I can send you this picture of me writhing on the ground like a wounded <laughs> rhinoceros. Lord. You know, yeah, yeah. Also, um, so Jamie, also as a Mexican-American, have you seen any, like, good films that kind of highlight your specific demographic and culture? And uh, So I, I, I think one of the... the fun not fun like obviously because it's a horror movie but like i think one of the movies where i was like oh shit this is happening right now is like the purge oh okay kind of like how it was they're trying to kill off the minorities like and it didn't work and then they go in there and pretend they're killing each other off and then it was just funny the like the last one was was it the final the last purge or purge forever purge yeah, yeah. Forever purge. funny to see like all the americans that wanted to keep mexicans out and they're all trying to cross the border to mexico because america's so fucked up so i was like <laughs> kind of like might happen we'll see i mean yeah. it's, that was kind of interesting that's really so, cool uh, yeah that it's funny how the 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 purge started just kind of as a concept yeah and then just because it got so popular they started to like inch like a couple little like political things because it is like a it's a government mandated thing yeah. so it's almost like you can't yeah. like yeah it's almost <laughs> like you can't the the government is such a thing in our lives right now and it's yeah. literally making a lot of stupid ass decisions for all of us that fucking blow um i, I definitely thought that last purge like I, I love that they're doing that i thought it was like over the top political so like like they rammed that message home you, you know just about the racism and and, and uh you know like you said you, you know we want to kill you in the u.s but if you're gonna offer a sanctuary we'll take it over just like we did with the indians you, you know we'll, we'll oh. take your land and your hospitality and I, I, that was that was such a trump era i i, I think you know election and that one yeah. action film that 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 the forever purge which uh i'm down for i mean i, I think it was a little heavy-handed but I'm, but but hell better that than and those movies are so fucking successful so you know yeah. And, and let them think, you know, let them think, you know, so. Did you see the one, I can't remember what it was called, it was maybe like Beneath Us or something, where the, that rich white couple hires like these immigrant Mexican guys and they end up like keeping them trapped under like the ground or yeah. something? No, I haven't. I haven't. And no, that she, sounds awesome though. doesn't want to pay for like expensive work. So she ends up hiring these people that don't, that aren't citizens, but they do the work and then she ends up like killing them. So then they find, I'm pretty sure they find a bunch of other people, like workers that they had killed for other parts of the house. It was really, it was really weird. And it, there's a, a really nice butt scene where she made the workers get undressed. <laughs> hey, I'm always down for male nudity in horror films. Mm, always, same. always. Same. Yeah, like I, I just got some European stuff and, and I, and I kind of looked, I was like, okay, lots of boobies. Oh, good. There's some butts. <laughs> you know, I'm always like, I just watched They Them, and I was like, okay, we saw some breasts. Do we get to see the last? Yes, we do. All right, we got it balanced out. You know, thank you. Yeah, hot. The one that uh, had sex, that got tr tricked into it. They, the They Them. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was. It wasn't really for me. Like, it, I kind of waited to the end for anything. That that was yeah. the girl, my girl, though. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I liked it better than a lot of the critics have. Um, uh, I think what I think with that is John Logan um, is a 60 year old gay, gay. He started out here in Chicago um, with doing theater, but he has been a super successful screenwriter for decades now, decades now. Gay, yes, but he's a, a, a really privileged, you know, living that, penthouse lifestyle gay man I, I think it's how how do you then write about teens who are surviving on the street and being kicked out of their homes and and like and and, and there's things about the fluidity and and like I, I, i'm 54 and, and i don't always get you, you know things about fluidity and non-gender you know and all that kind of stuff so it's like how does this privileged 
60 year old white dude really get that you know obviously you're supposed to like kind of escape into your characters and live their lives but but about, i wonder like i even th that there's a pink song that they sing on that and i'm even wondering i'm like these kids are so young is pink like the thing that they, they would be singing at this point in time i mean isn't there someone that's hipper and and more current like obviously she's a lgbtqia icon but i, I would think yeah. these kids are so alternative and funky and, and live in their own lives that they're yeah. that they would be singing that there's a huge sing-along song and, and they then to, to this pink uh hmm. song and um, which which is odd to me because it just comes out of nowhere and it's like per perfectly choreographed like they're skidding across the floor and you know doing all this kind of stuff like it, not it, it's, it's basically like a montage like a musical montage thing but, but even that hey. I was like I could see this dude thinking well pink's cool the kids like pink you know, it's like, funny. I mean, she is really still Arca she's... or someone like that, you know, like, <laughs> you know. It's so funny because so many <laughs> there are so many TikToks about like, you know, it's like when a when an NB, like when a non-binary person puts on the puts gets the aux cable and it's just like beep 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 boop beep beep boop beep, beep beep like it's just like like horrible like beeps and somebody like in the comments was like it's giving Arca. No, it's giving me a headache. Like <laughs> It's just funny because they say that like non-binary people are like just only listening to Arca, but yeah. Pink is still doing shit. Well, I, I, I know she is. I, I know she is. But it, I just it, yeah, is it is going, it like, adult which, contemporary? Exactly you know, like the go-to, you, you know, really for these you know young young kids who are you know. Yeah, it's like I think it's the 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 millennials love to flash mob. I don't know if Gen Z loves a flash mob. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I like I don't know, but um. Gen Z does love it when I kind of do my rhinoceros flop and go, hey, you want this, you want this in my living room. But before I am compelled to do that, I think we need to reconnect with our amazing guests and just get all the information out there about everything you are doing, my man, because our time is running out. Yeah, tell us all, all the music when it's when it's okay. coming. And yeah, we're excited. Yeah, so uh, the, <clears throat> the next, it's, it's, it's a lot of big stuff I can't say yet because it's oh. like, and stuff uh if, if the producer watching he'll appreciate that uh <laughs> but uh yeah the, next... the screen it's so big huh it, it, it's so big it won't fill our screen so we can't mention it yet right mm -hmm. yeah. it's, just like, it's just a lot like, it's well, how can i say it? uh no no just... we, we get it. It, it it's stuff in development that you can't talk about yet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know we, uh, we get it yeah, okay. um the next single is called beautiful life it comes out in uh the next month i think early early next month um, I am flying to England in two weeks to perform at Manchester Pride. Dude, that's so fucking awesome. I'm so happy for you. That's fucking amazing. Dude, and you can meet your British husband. What the yeah, fuck? Find, you're find uh, your British boy there. Find your man. You're going to perform I'm, and find your man. Luke, Luke Evans, better watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going for. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to do that. I'm, do, I'm not sure what the set list is going to be. Like I said, I'm, I'm writing two new songs starting tonight. Uh, I just got the tracks today. Um, I'm pretty sure he wants my album done and ready for whenever they want to release it. And hopefully they said, they think that by the end of October, so it's probably going to be like 12 songs, I think. So uh, I just said, so I just got the music video for Beautiful Life. That was my first video ever. It was, so, I don't think I'm an actor or a model. And it's so, I, it took me a lot to like yeah. stay in characters. My ADD was like, bloop, bloop, bloop. you know, I'm sitting there looking at the lights and I think people are watching from across the, live, across the street in their house. And I just, I'm super weird about it, but it was a really fun experience in the video. There's, it's a really fun message song, kind of, you know, uh, the, all my friends wearing it, they all did it for free. They, they just want to be part of it. So my, okay. job, my job side was super supportive about it. I didn't get that email, but, 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 but okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, nerves of steel. I've been rejected so many times in my life that. Yes. Well, the next, I'll call you for the next one. Hopefully, okay. a Halloween themed one. We'll see. Fuck yeah! See, that's what it's all about. There this we is, go. This there is go. what I expect. I expect you to turn it out for Halloween, Jamie. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I. I really. I write a song about I scream queens when I was writing a couple of songs earlier and when I started doing music I really wanted to I love to like I've always wanted to name drop people that I love that nobody knows about yeah yeah so, of course yes. Brooke and Toy and Linnea I mean people uh, are yeah. people know who they are but the world doesn't yeah. so I, I used to do that in my theater reviews I, I I would throw shit in if I could yeah so I, I love that yeah 
Nice. I wish Pam Thing would come back and do another Superboy camp. Yeah. That yeah, like being a being a dirty girl gets you killed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But yeah, that, that that's the music stuff. It's it, it, it's happening really really fast. So hopefully it. And you're you're on Spotify and all that kind of stuff, correct? It's the, for Spotify, Apple, Pandora, iTunes. Yeah, it's all. It's, yeah. It's all, it's all coming out. Nice, nice. And stuff. it's under it's under Jamie Adrian, yeah. Yep. J- yeah, A- Jamie, Jamie Adrian. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, best of luck. I'm so excited for you as someone who like I don't know who has been in a band for 13 years that has stalled out because we all have kids and we're all very tired and old. But we're <laughs> really happy to see. I'm happy to see people fucking getting out there and doing shit. Best of luck and thank you so much for being here.